Today's top story. Lions were found dead in a man's backyard. Analytical chemist has shown that the cause of death was the herbicide in the grass that the lions ate. This is analytical chemistry. It is the science of identifying chemical compound in an unknown sample and determining how much of it exists. Recent advances in analytical chemistry has made it possible to detect small amounts of harmful compound in the environment. Lions, you want to learn about those harmful compounds out there and continue watching the video. Haters! Okay, let's take a look at some harmful compounds detected by analytical chemistry. Over the years, analytical chemists have found Vespinone A, BPA, DEET, an insect repellent, and PFOAs. And they can all be found in the environments that we live in today. And you and focusing on BPA, uh, the impacts of analytical chemistry on the society will be illustrated. So, what exactly is best known A? Here is a molecular model of it. In case you don't know what DEET is, it's an insect repellent, as you can see in figure 2. So let's talk about best known A, BPA. BPA is the starting compound used in the production of plastics. It is found in a lot of stuff, and we're going to list them later. And using analytical chemistry, very small amounts of BPA have been detected in the environment and in some cases enters the human body so they're found in compact disc water bottles baby bottles and food containers as you can see a lot of them relates to very common common household objects and most of them are have have something to relate to food and drinks and that's very dangerous so how does BPA enter the body studies have shown that BPA leaches into canned foods so an epoxy resin lining inside of canned foods contains BPA and so the BPA leaches into the food and when we eat the food we we have BPA in our body and before 2008 baby bottles containing BPA were sold in Canada and studies show Litching of BPA occurred when baby bottles were filled with water. And referring to page 290 in the Chemistry 11 textbook, sulfur molecules or water, in particular, has greater kinetic energy at high temperatures and can better dissolve solid in contact with it. Okay, so what it's saying is. The heat up of water can make it easier to, to dissolve solid. Do we have girls? Do we have girls? We got girls, alright. <laughs> Look at you, all concerned about the girls, huh? Well, here they come. 
Just kidding. We don't have any. Now pay attention! Oops. Okay. Health effects of BPA. So when... After the BPA has entered the body, what does it have on us? Well, BPA is an endocrine disruptor which interferes with hormone activities. It acts similar to the female hormone estrogens. And in a study in male mice, it showed a decrease in sperm counts after exposure to exposure to BPA. So what it does is that it decreases the the male hormone or testosterone and increase the female hormone estrogens in the male mice and properly in male human. BPA is also a possible factor that causes cancer and by using analytical chemistry we make it possible to detect harmful compounds similar to BPA so all thanks to analytical chemistry we are all safe for now and how exactly is BPA detected well here's a diagram of how it is is detected. Let me explain. We use a method called high performance liquid chromatography or HPLC. HPLC is a method in analytical chemistry and can be used to detect BPA in water samples. The samples is first pumped through a column where separation of compounds occur. Compounds then travel through the column at different speeds, so they are identified by the retention time or travel speed. Their identity will be revealed. Okay, the environmental impact of BPA. Well, BPA enters the environment through the air, soil, and water. In one study, groundwater samples were taken in 164 different locations in over 23 European countries. And analytical chemistry shows that BPA concentrations in this sample were on average of 0.08 parts per billion ppb. So what? How much is BP? PPB. How much is a PPB? Well, one PPB is the same as one BPA molecule in one billion molecules of water. So that's relatively small. However, BPA causes defects. Defects. BPA causes defects in fish and other aquatic life even at these low concentrations so they are mutated okay some social impacts of BPA well BPA has done harm to the environment but socially it actually brings good BPA has allowed for technological advances such as the manufacturing of computer parts, specialized medical devices, and cell phones. And in Europe alone, BPA has created over 550,000 jobs and 18 billion euros worth of wages, 3.7 billion euros worth of products, and 6 billion euros in labor tax. So. A ban of BPA negatively affects the economy and people lose their jobs and create a lot of social problems. Uh, they get drunk, they drink and drive, they crash the car, they go bankrupt, uh, they kill people 
chaos, chaos, I mean chaos, chaotic, chaotic everywhere. You know? And in two, 2010, the Canadian government declared BPA as toxic and aims to minimize and eliminate BPA in consumer products. So that's, that have really, really negative effects on effects on Canadian economy, especially for the in industry. Oops. Well, some application applications of analytical chemistry. Analytical methods can be applied to fields, in fact, to a lot of fields, such as genomics, is a study of DNA, environmental monitoring, and forensic science, and probably a lot more, such as biology, geology, and uh, yeah, and geological uh, advantages to geological studies is that water and soil sample can be analyzed for pollutants and in forensic science identifying harmful compounds in the victim can show the cause of death which helps a lot well not only that I think people should pay attention more on this analytical chemistry. It is a very important study, a study of science. It's a very important science. You know, uh, when you when you're asking the question, what is in the water, what is in the food, what is in a Big Mac that you are eating, what is in, in everything, what is in what is in the sink, what is under your chair. I mean, the air that you breathe in, what is in it, it's all analytical chemistry, you know. Analytical chemists analyze these kind of things all the time, and sometimes we just don't pay attention to them. And it really has a lot to do with our daily life. Thank you.